Jane. She'll be out until morning. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I mean, it's been one of those days. <laughs> one of those days. David. Wong, sir. David Wong. Wong, of course. I know. I've gotten excellent reports about your work at the company. Excellent. Well, thank you, sir. Relax. Take your coat off. Make yourself at home. Can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thank you, sir. Are you sure? I'm gonna have one. <laughs> well, maybe a soda, sir? You got it. I can't tell you how happy I am that you agreed to see me, Mr. Sirridge. No, I'm the one who's happy. Not, not with what you're gonna tell me, but uh, it's damn good to know that there's somebody in your employ who's minding the store. This, this savings and loan scandal, it's a disgrace. It's gonna cost the American taxpayer up to $500 billion and that's just the beginning, so if there's the remotest possibility that there's any wrongdoing in my company, I want to be the first to know. Did you uh, bring the papers you were telling me about? Oh, no, sir. I didn't think you were going to see me. And Mr. Brooks had been putting me off. That's Harvey Brooks, your supervisor. No, he's the manager of the corporate offices, sir. That's right. Uh, How much does he know about all this? Some, but I didn't tell him everything that I picked up. Well, that's wise. And just what have you picked up? There are quite a number of questionable loans, sir. But three in particular smell to high heaven. In what way, David? In what way? Well, the 350 houses in Riverside County, the 250 condos in Ventura, and the big project near the beach. If the builders never were to sell a single one, they'd pull a cool 20 million from the construction funds, leaving us holding the bag. That is to say, the U.S. taxpayer as well. 20 million? And to whom did we make these loans? Well, sir, that's very difficult, but I think that I'm very close. The construction company is in L.A., but the parent company is in Phoenix, which in turn is owned by a holding company in Delaware. But there's more than that. There's an offshore company in Barbados. I get the picture, David. I have done a thorough job. Well, that's what you pay me for, sir. And you say that Mr. Brooks is the only person you've talked to about this. He's the only one that knows anything about it. Uh, nobody, sir. But even with Mr. Brooks, I was very circumspect with what I told him. And what about the papers confirming everything you're telling me? Well, I've hidden them away, sir. Where? Someplace safe, I hope. In your office? Uh, at my place. You're gonna go very far, David. Thank you, sir. Very far. Take the rest of the stuff and, and get out of here quick. Don't get carried away. <laughs> oh. Oh. <sighs> I had to make it look real. What's wrong, huh? Nothing's wrong. Oh, nothing's wrong. Come on. What is this, the M word, huh? The M word? Uh, yeah. I want to marry you. So what? You know, I've asked you to marry me three times this last year, Ralph. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's more than that. You know it. I come over here. I cook for you. I clean for you. I take care of Sue. I make your bed every time we sleep together, every Tuesday, Thursday, and right. Saturday. What are you, keeping score here, huh? I didn't think we were that rigid. That's not funny, Ralph. I'm not... Your wife has been dead for two years. I still feel like I'm competing with a ghost. That's great, that's great. The next thing you're gonna be telling me is uh, your biological clock is ticking, right? Every fucking clock in 
my house is ticking. That's great. Let's just break the whole goddamn house up. What happened? What the hell is this? What's this crap on your face? It's called makeup, Dad. Every girl in my class wears it, okay? Even Agnes Mahoney. And Agnes Mahoney is 11. You listen to me. I don't give a good goddamn about Agnes Mahoney. What happened to baseball, for Christ's sakes, huh? Now, now it's just boys, right? No, no. Look, Dad, I still like baseball. But, you know, I've reached puberty. Puberty? Where, where are you learning these goddamn words? Ralph, it's a perfectly legitimate word. And your daughter has indeed reached puberty. Are you telling me that she got... Sheriff Baker's. Hey, Joe, we got a homicide. Bob's on his way there now. If you can't reach him, you better send the boys. He may know more than he should. He isn't at home. I'll try him at the office. I hear he works late a lot. That kid from accounting was in your office for over an hour today. What's that all about? What kid? Don't play dumb. David Wong, the new genius from accounting. That. No, just a personal matter. Uh-huh. Don't bullshit me. He was in your office for over an hour, and then suddenly Sirage's right hand comes flying in. I mean, I haven't seen Richard Stewart here in over six months. Listen, Bab, you just stick to your steno and typing and be nice to your boss. Don't think about anything else, huh? Uh-huh. Listen, Harv, just because I have big tits doesn't make me a bimbo. ago, David and I were talking. David Wong, one of my employees. Here at the house? No, at my corporate offices downtown. He's an accountant. He was an accountant. We were just starting a conversation when all of a sudden, two guys burst in through the French doors in the kitchen. What did they look like? They wore ski masks and, and gloves. I mean, I couldn't give you a description. They were pointing guns at me and pushed me into the room and knocked me down. One of them pistol with me. Just then, David jumped up, and one of the guys shot him. He fell on top of me. The other guy ran off some more shots. I mean, I didn't know whether I was hit or not. And they must have thought I was dead, because I closed my eyes and I didn't move. I felt them take off my, my watch and my ring, and I heard them running around the room, knocking things over and smashing things. And then. I heard his car come down the driveway and one of the guys yelling, who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is that? And then they ran out. I didn't open my eyes until he, he came in the room. Yes, you see, just as I was parking the car, I heard the, the squeal of tires and I saw Charles' car come roaring down the driveway. And I, well, it happened so quickly, I, I thought it was Charles driving and uh, well, I couldn't for the life of me figure out what was wrong. And then, of course, I... Uh, I came in here and I found this. Right. You know, every time I uh, drive by here, those two dogs of yours, they start barking and clawing at that fence like they want to rip my face apart. Tonight I come up here and they're not there. Why is that? Right. We found them this morning, vomiting, barely able to stand. Hmm. I took him to the vets this morning, and he said that, uh, that during the night, somebody had given them some poison. Poison? Mm -hmm. Bob, you want to check that out? Also, let's uh, run the plates and registration on his car. Doc, wake Dokes up, tell him to come and get the body. But don't you let him touch it until I get there. Tonight? Tonight, Doc.
Jesus. He's just a kid. How long has he been with the company? Three months. Three months? So he had a very important position then, right? I mean, Orton Creek is what, uh, an hour from downtown LA? Is it customary to entertain lower level employees all the way out here on a weeknight? I wasn't entertaining him. David had some special gifts, and we were just trying to determine how best to utilize those gifts. Where are the servants? It's Wednesday. The servants are off on Wednesday. Oh, I thought they had Thursdays off. Maybe at your house. You're married, aren't you? That's correct. So, where is she? She's upstairs. She's upstairs. What, did she see or hear anything? Look, I'd appreciate if you'd keep confidential what I'm about to tell you. Dr. Cantwell has been treating my wife for... His uh, wife has a drug dependency problem. Uh, she was getting along well until a couple of weeks ago, and then... Uh... You see, when I took the try up tonight, she... Um, well, let's just put it this way. Uh, I don't think she saw or heard anything. I understand. Well, I don't want to trouble you anymore. Let you good people get some rest. That's the best thing for you. I'll be in touch. Doc, I'll see you at the coroner's office. Yeah. Good night. Son of a bitch. Okay. All ready for bed. You're mad at Daddy, aren't you? I'm not mad. You broke a plate. Well, that was an accident. Now I'm going to stay here till your dad gets home. I want you to stay here forever. I don't know about forever. I know I'm going to love you forever. No matter what happens between your dad and me. God damn it, Doc. Take a look again. Go on, look! I mean, it's got more blood there than any other place. And unless I didn't hear right, Serge said the kid jumped up, got shot, and fell on top of him, and got shot again. So why the hell is there so much blood on the couch? Plenty of blood where I found him. Oh, you think so? Well, then you tell me this. How come every time my kid gets sick, it takes you two hours to get to my house? You got to Serge before Bob did. What are you trying to say, Sheriff? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that something smells around here, and I don't like it, Doc. You understand? I do not like it, and I'm doing something about it. And for once, you get on my side, all right? Just one time. Jesus, come on, Bob. Let's get out of here. Hey, Bob, in that hotel in Waikiki, how'd your wife like it? Yeah, it was okay. Go to Cancun, I'm telling you. A lot more action. Oh, yeah, that's one of those uh, swinging single places, huh? That's what they tell me. Hey, Ralph. This should be fun, huh? Yeah, I got the secretary to the savings and loans on the phone. Hello? Yeah, Miss Griffith. Well, yes, he usually is in by now. Well, did he have an appointment outside the office? Not that I know of. I tell you what, I'm gonna drive in from Horton Creek. It should take me about an hour. Um, ask him to put some time aside for me, will you? Yes, I certainly will. Great, thank you very much. Bye-bye. 
Why are you taking your time to go to Los Angeles? They got police down there. Let them handle it. Because David Wong was murdered in our jurisdiction. The more I think about it, the more I don't like it. All right, Bob? Uh, you're not uh, going on vacation this week, are you? No, Friday, a week from today. Oh, good. I was thinking maybe uh, we could have some dinner tonight. Sure, that'd be nice. But that's it. It's Friday. Ah, Friday. Right. Yeah, get me personnel. Hi, honey, this is Babs. Listen, Harvey wanted me to send flowers to the Wong family. What's his address? Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. You're up awfully early. Doesn't that stuff you use last very long anymore? What happened? It was a robbery. One of my employees was killed. Who? Nobody you know. An accountant from the downtown office. Who did it? Two men. Ski masks. Could you bring my stuff up a little earlier this evening? I'm, I'm feeling very nervous. I'll bring it up at the usual time. Yes. My name is Barbara Griffin. I'm with the Savings and Loan. They asked me to bring some flowers. Are you David's grandmother? Y yes. I, uh... I'll be honest with you. David and I were quite close. He confided in me a great deal. And, um... He said if, if anything happened to him that you could help. There were some papers. Would you care to step in a moment? Yes, thank you. Miss Griffin knew I was coming. Will you tell her I'll be back? And just one other thing. Uh, are you sure this is the right address for Mr. Brooks? All right, thank you. Well, you certainly picked the right neighbor. Mr. Brooks gives me his key so that I can water his plants, you know, while he's uh, in Palm Springs. I, uh, I don't usually limp. I have a sore toe. Actually, I have arthritis in my feet. I just don't like to say that I have arthritis because it sounds so old. <laughs> you know, most people think that you get arthritis when you get old, but that isn't true, really. My, my doctor says that uh, a lot of young people get it, too. Of course, I've always been very active, too. You know, uh, you know, athletes, how they get that, that grinding in their knees, that's because they're so active. Really? You don't look like a policeman. Well, Sheriff, 
Oh. Anyway, it's very frustrating because I like to wear high heels, and I just don't think a woman looks well-dressed unless she's in high heels. I mean, you, know, you see these young girls wearing these suits with flats on. It just looks very unattractive. Of course, they probably won't get uh, arthritis in their feet when they're um, 37. And also, you know, I miss dancing, too, because my second husband was a terrific dancer. One I have now can't dance worth a damn. My mother always said, never marry a man that can't dance. <laughs> of course, I can't dance now anyway, so what difference does it make? <laughs> I uh, didn't realize things were going badly for you and Ralph. Well, they're not going badly. They're not going any place, really. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Acapulco. I went there one weekend before I was married. They got this bar there. I'm telling you, it's wall-to-wall -wall women. We're talking each one more gorgeous than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> they got an act there, I'm telling you what. This woman picks up a ping pong ball, no hands, pops it across the stage, goes about 10 feet, lands in a shot glass. <laughs> Took her about 12 tries, God love her. <laughs> Cost me a fortune, but I'm telling you, it knocks your eyes out. <laughs> Bob, you think you can remember the address? I can't wait to get there. <clears throat> Joe, you read me? What do you want? What the hell's the matter with you? Uh, I'm sorry, there's just a lot of static here today. Well, you're coming in loud and clear here. Look, Joe, I'm going back to Serge's office. Uh, his L.A. manager was found dead, supposedly suicide, but I don't buy it. Call Serge and tell him as soon as I get back to Orton Creek that I want to talk to him, all right? What if he's not available? Well, then you tell him to make himself available. Tell him it's better to deal with me than the United States government. And speaking of the government, go to my Rolodex and look under the name of Ruth Epstein, give her a call, give her my home phone number, and tell her to call me tonight, all right? Is this before or after I leave? Jesus Christ, she's an ex-cop, all right? I used to work with her in L.A. Now she's a lawyer working for the government investigating the SNL mess. Okay, sorry, I'll do my best. Thank you. Oh, so where's Sue? Uh, she went to watch a softball game. Really? Well, I guess that uh, talk I had with her did her some good, huh? Whatever the hell Searage wants, it ain't here. Let's go. Hi. I'm Sheriff Baker. I have an appointment with Miss Griffin. I'm Miss Griffin. I'm sorry, Sheriff Baker. Mr. Brooks still hasn't come in. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, when we talked earlier, you said the last time you'd uh -huh. seen Mr. Brooks was up here yesterday. I was wondering what time that was. Um, I'm not sure. Really? Well, the security officer said you were both working here late last night. Oh, yes. That, that was last night. I forgot. What were you working on? Um, well, I'm I can tell you that I'm just his secretary. I believe you'll have to ask Mr. Brooks that. Well, I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, why not? Well, I'm sorry to tell you this. Uh, Mr. Brooks is dead. 
Oh my God. How did it happen? He hung himself. Now, do you know any reason why he commits suicide? I mean, was he unhappy? Physical problems, money problems, anything? No, I just can't imagine him taking his own life. Let's see. Do you know a David Wong? No, I didn't know him. I'd seen him around. Well, did he and Mr. Brooks spend time together? I can't imagine that. Mr. Brooks is head of regional affairs, and David Wong was just... Well, the head of his department said he was up here with Mr. Brooks for a couple of hours yesterday. Oh, yes. Um, well, I was in the library. I was I actually doing quite a bit of research. <clears throat> I really couldn't tell you how much time they spent together. I see. Well, all right. Oh, by the way, um, is there any hanky-panky going on with the company here? You know, the kind of stuff that you read about in the newspaper? Well, I certainly wouldn't know uh, here in my little world. And besides, Mr. Searidge is an exceptionally well-respected man. Yeah, a real prince, huh? All right, well, if you think anything, uh, you give me a call, all right? I certainly will. Bye-bye. Yeah, Joe, do you read me? Come in, Joe. This is Ralph. Do you read me? I'm here. All right, listen, I'm going to leave Sirius' savings right now. Did you tell him I was coming by his house? Yeah, he seemed agreeable. OK. Uh, look, it's going to be dark by the time I get home. What do you say you wait dinner for me, huh? You bet. Very good. Thank you. I advise Mr. Sears not to see him. He's still in shock from last night. Uh, now the news about Mr. Brooks, but he insisted he wanted to see you to cooperate in any way that he could. Well, that's very kind of him. Ah, here he is. Sheriff Baker. Good evening. Why don't you sit down? No, no, I should be getting home soon. Uh, I'd like to have dinner with my kid as much as I can. That's nice. How old is she? Well, my kid? 12. Going on 28. Huh? So, what do you think? Any ideas on why uh, Harvey Brooks committed suicide? Is that what the L.A. police think, that he committed suicide? Yeah. Interesting, huh? Do you? I don't know. Sure as hell looks like suicide, doesn't it? But I'll tell you what I do know is you've got two dead employees in less than a 12-hour span. Now, what I'm wondering, is there a connection? I think there is. At least the possibility exists. You see, when David Wong was here the other night, he began to allude to certain financial improprieties on the part of Mr. Brooks. Now, you know he went to see him because he indicated to me that he confronted Mr. Brooks with his suspicions. I'm not prepared to go any further. We're conducting a little investigation of our own. Well, what sort of improprieties were discussed? He never got that far. I see. So what you're saying is whatever David Wong told Harvey Brooks, that was enough for him to put a noose around his neck and hang himself? Possibly. Possibly. What about these two thugs that broke in here last night? They have some kind of connection to Brooks? Would you excuse me, Sheriff? I'd like to pursue this further. Why don't you just make an appointment with my associate? Evening, ma'am. Uh, sheriff, uh, you can call me as soon as you like. Richard, would you see the sheriff to the door? Yes, Sheriff. Uh... As I say, call me for an appointment. Right. What the fuck were you doing downstairs? I wanted you to bring my stuff up early this evening. I, 
I'm just so nervous. You haven't earned it yet. So how was your baseball game? Um, Sue uh, went to the library. She uh, had some work to do for one of her classes. Huh? You went to the library? No. Well, that's great, honey. You know what? I, uh, I saw Serge's wife today downstairs, and uh, I think she was listening to our conversation. But it was real strange. She had, a, uh, she had this fur coat on, but uh, I, don't, I don't think she had anything on underneath. <laughs> I swear, I swear, I've seen this woman before someplace. Hmm. Hmm. Fur coat, nothing on underneath. Supermarket? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think she's the uh, type to go to a supermarket. Well, what kind of a type do you have to be to go to the supermarket? Well, she's rich, and I'm sure she's got people who do those things for her. Besides, Sarah said uh, his wife had some kind of drug problem. Well, you know, she can get help, but you know, she has to want to. Excuse me, where, where, where do you learn things like this? School. They teach in school. In the sixth grade, you're learning about drugs? Daddy, I'm in junior high. I know that. You want some more chicken? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Junior high. Thanks. So what do you think? Uh, where are you going on vacation? <clears throat> well, I, I think I'm leaning toward Mexico. Mexico, huh? Mm. Mm. Well, you know, if you waited uh, till school vacation, maybe the three of us could all go together. Oh, Joe, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. yes. You know, Sue, sometimes a girl's got to get away by herself. It doesn't mean I don't love you or your dad. My kids some tea. Sheriff Station. Sheriff Baker, please. Uh, he's not in. May I help you? I said, may I help you? Hello? I saw the phone blinking. Who are you calling? The weather. <laughs> I thought I would go out. You need something? Tell Richard. He'll send the servants for you. Sweetie. Oh, Daddy. Yeah. Do you love Joe? Do I what? Do you love Joe? Well, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Then why don't you marry her? <laughs> My God, you are so young and you've already joined the sisterhood, haven't you? The sisterhood? What's the sisterhood? Well, that just means that, uh, that men and that women have different agendas. I don't understand that, Daddy. I know, neither do I. Look, why don't you go to sleep, all right? It's Mommy, isn't it? Hmm. Mommy. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mom would have wanted you to be happy. And 
I mean, I think she really would have liked Joe. You think so? Yes, I do. Hmm. Well, when you go to sleep, we'll talk about it in the morning, all right? Okay. Who loves you? Who's in love with you? Daddy! Love monster! Love monster! Go to sleep. Okay. Okay. Sleep. Okay. Uh oh! <laughs> love monster! I'm trying to go to sleep, Daddy! Yeah, yeah, hello? Ralph, it's Ruth. Ruth, my God, how are you? How's my ex-partner? I'm a little tired right now, but all in all, I can't complain. Listen, I just got your message. Uh, my secretary called from L.A. I'm in a motel room in Saugus. In Saugus? Great. Well, that's, uh, that's right around the corner from Wharton Creek. What the hell are you doing in Canyon Country? Well, I got to do an audit on a savings and loan bright and early in the morning, and I figured, you know, I want to get a good night's sleep instead of fighting the traffic. Well, look, um, you know, I didn't mean to bother you, but the reason why I called, and I'm not sure, but it might be connected with what you're doing. Well, I'd love to see you. How about uh, breakfast tomorrow? Yeah, name the time and place. Well, I gotta do the bank at nine, so how about eight? I'm staying at, um, what is this, the Country Inn? Okay, I'll I know where that is. Now, right up the street on the left, there's this little cafe. Well, I'll meet you there at eight o'clock, okay? Okay. Kind of, all right, it's gonna be good to see you, pard. Yeah, you too, pard. Bye. Oh, um, uh, well, I was wondering if we could go someplace and talk. So, uh, Look, I have to take a shower and get to work. Remember, you've got that meeting with that government lawyer today. Joe? I don't want you to leave. Um, when I asked you last night to go on vacation with Sue and me, um, what? Well, I don't want you just to go on vacation with us. You know, 
English is my first language. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you're gonna make this really hard for me, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm not very good at reading between the lines. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Um. Are you finally asking me to marry you? <laughs> well, um. Uh. Ask me. It's easy. All you have to do is say, Joe. Will you marry me? Uh. Will you marry me? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Okay. What? Well, uh... Ralph. Good morning. Hey. <laughs> hey, Fred. Did you get a load of that babe Ralph was sitting with in the cafe this morning? Uh, yeah. How old do you figure she was? 18, maybe 19. If it's who I think it is, she's an ex-cop who used to work with Ralph in L.A. And then she became a lawyer, so she's got to be at least 40. <laughs> 40? Joe, if that broad is 40, I'm 19, okay? I mean, she looked like a high school cheerleader, only I never seen a cheerleader with boobs that big. <laughs> she couldn't get close enough to the baton. And did you see the way they leaned over the table staring at each other, holding hands? Yeah, yeah, did, did, did you see him try to reach for a piece of toast and she wouldn't let go of his hand? Speaking of boobs, you two are the biggest ones I've ever seen. So, until we get complaints from the stockholders of the SNLs, or in more blatant cases, the banks go belly up, we just can't go around auditing every one of them. Now, in the case of Surridge's company, we got some complaints, but not enough for a full-fledged investigation. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have one of my assistants sniff around, and uh, if he comes up with something, I'll let you know. Oh, thanks. Your sweetheart. Well, so are you. Late. No, no, don't go, don't go. It's good to see you again. <laughs> you look great. Thanks. Uh, huh. Did you ever wonder why uh, we didn't get together when we were in L.A.? Well, uh, if I remember correctly, you were married and very much in love. Before then. Are you telling me that you never figured out I was gay? You're, you're gay? <laughs> you no. are innocent, aren't you? Well, oh, I hate to disillusion you, but we do shave under our arms and our legs. No place else. I don't want to come off like an idiot here, but... Uh, this comes as a big surprise. I shouldn't have told you anyway, but you know, on the force, I was all zippered up and I would have gotten kicked out. I guess I, uh, I feel a little freer now. I really gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Here. Oh. Okay. Thanks. 
Listen, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to come off like some kind of idiot. Uh, just uh, caught me by surprise. Oh, no problem. Can I have a hug? <laughs> oh, great to see you. Okay. Listen, if I get some info, I'll call. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yes, I'll have the sheriff call you as soon as he gets in. Y yes. I'll have him call you. Thank you very much. Fred, uh, I want you to call the county explosive team right away. Meet him out on Sierra Highway at the country inn, all right? There's a car out there that's a smoldering mass of metal. No, no, no. You don't let one son of a bitch. I mean, nobody puts a finger on that car until we find out why it blew up. Ralph, this is important. All right, yeah, but Fred, I called from the car radio. There's a body on the highway. They're not going to be able to identify it, but I know who she is. God damn it. What? David Wong's grandmother was found murdered. Her throat was cut from ear to ear. Oh, Jesus Christ. The house was wrecked. There was, nothing was untouched. Uh, obviously, somebody was looking for something. All right, all right. I'll tell you what. Uh, call him back and uh, find out what time she died. We already know that. The mortician who was handling her grandson's funeral was trying to get a hold of her, couldn't get a hold of her, went over there last night. He estimates the time of death sometime between late morning, early afternoon. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch! Right. I tell you what, Bob, you get on the phone and you tell Sears I am on my way. You do that. No, Bob, Bob, forget it. Don't even bother. Who the hell do you think you are? Barging in here any goddamn time you feel like it? For Christ's sakes, man, there are four dead bodies. Who are these four people anyway? I only know two. Well, for starters, there's David Wong's grandmother, not only dead, but her house was ransacked. And that's my question, you see? Do you think whoever killed her was looking for something that David had? Why ask me? You have any more questions? Contact my lawyer. Look, why don't you look into Mr. Brooks' activities? He didn't commit suicide for nothing. No. You see, I'm not too sure our Mr. Brooks committed suicide. I mean, he was dead for at least 12 hours when Grandma got hers. Now, I don't see how he could have done that unless he's supernatural. He may have had accomplices. We're conducting an investigation of our own. We think he did. Now, may I leave? Well, aren't you interested in who the fourth body belongs to? Or do you already know? I'm warning you. No, you don't warn me. You do not warn me. You cooperate Get with me. Get off my property, right now. Are you interested in, in a cover-up? Get off my property, right now. And if you ever come back here, make sure you have a warrant. You will be leaving, won't you, Sheriff? where it hurts. Oh, hi. I'm hi. sorry I'm late. I'm having some trouble with my tire. I'm gonna have to get some air for it. Well, uh, we'll get you a soda, okay? An ice cream soda? Ice cream for you and Diet Pepsi for me. <laughs> I see you've been having some problems with your tires, ladies. <laughs> like some help changing it? No, thanks. I can get it myself. Really? You know, it's against my principles to let a lady do that kind of work. Oh, oh, get it! Get the car! Mr. Stewart, Mr. Stewart, you still 
it's not possible. I'm sorry. Mr. Searage, my name is... Can it wait? Have some... No, it can't. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to. Mr. Searage, it has to do with David Wong. What about David Wong? He had some papers I think might interest you. Am I to assume you have these papers? Oh, yes. How would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Well, it sounds wonderful. Where? At my house. Richard, would you give her my address and directions? I have the address. Not only is she beautiful, she does her homework. Will you bring the papers? Well, a reasonable facsimile. Eight thirty. Serious residence. Yeah, we got the kid and the bride here, right? But I had to send Huey down to the market, see? I mean, there's no food or booze here. I mean, how long you expect me to stay here? Well, we feel the sheriff should knuckle under very quickly. Now, look, there's no need for any booze up there. Don't you tell me what I need. You just take care of your end. You got that. And another thing. I mean, you sure nobody knows about this place? And there's, there's empty dishes, there's, there's bottles. It looks like this place is lived in. Well, listen, this is serious. She got very violent a few weeks ago. We had a stash up there for a few days till she chilled out. Now, look here. Listen to me. Now, listen, that broad is no dummy. She's a policewoman. All right, now, did she have anything on her? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got it. I'm playing with it right now. All right, good. Listen, I'll uh, check with Mr. Sirius, and you know, I'll get back to you in a little bit, all right? Take it easy. God damn it, where the hell are they? It's December. The stores are full. You know how crowded they are. Great, then why didn't she call? Joe said she wanted to get all of her Christmas shopping done before her vacation. No, we were supposed to have dinner tonight. Hell with it. You know what? I don't feel like eating. All right? She shows up, you tell her to call me at home. All right? Good night. Good night. Right on the bus. My mother taught me to never be late for a business meeting. And I thought this was a social engagement. <laughs> she also taught me not to mix business and pleasure. But I don't listen to everything she told me. I knew there was something about you I liked. Mm. How about a drink before we sit down to dinner? That would be wonderful. Right here.
get it together. Yeah, Fred, it's Ralph. Listen, uh, there's no way I'm gonna sit around here and wait, all right? I'm gonna go for the bar. I'm gonna go look for him. Well, where are you gonna look? Sheriff Station. Hello, Sheriff Station. Hello, Sheriff Station. Hello? This is Jean Murray. I'm sorry, but Sheriff Baker's not in. Idlewild. Idlewild. We're both gonna stay here for as long as it takes. Try to relax. All right, great, thanks. Uh, I'll be in touch. Who was that? Ralph. He's going out looking for the kid. If you're gonna try and get him on the car radio, forget it. He took the black and white into the shop. What's wrong? Some woman just called up for Ralph. Sounded stoned out of her mind, and I'm sure it's the same woman that tried to call him last night about this time. A lot of drunks call here at night. Does the name Gene Murray mean anything to you? Sounds familiar. I don't know. Another little drink while we chat some more. Another thing my mother told me was to never talk business until after dessert. Oh, I think we can wait even later than that. I think. The last I heard, you were a happily married man, Mr. Sirich. Charles, call me Charles. Well, then you can call me Babs. Excuse me. Could I speak to you for a moment, please? Carrie, wait. It's very urgent, sir. Excuse me. I'm sorry, an important business matter just came up. Excuse me. Give it to her and make sure she takes it. Okay. All of it.
Hey, kid, you, you want an ice cream? Hey, you don't come out here now. Your old man is dead. Anything, Bob? Yeah, last night a woman called for you. Um, I don't know if it's booze or drugs or whatever, but she was sounded stoned out of her mind. Yeah? Yeah, and she called again tonight. Uh, she said her name was Jean Murray. You know her? Jean Murray. Jesus, that's who that was. That's who who was? Sears' wife. I knew she looked familiar. What's she want? I don't know. She hung up again. But there was a noise on the line. That son of a bitch has got my kid, and he's got Joe. And you know what? I'm gonna kill him. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? He's been pressuring me to lay off, right? I mean, look at it. The, the Chinese kid, he takes six bullets in the chest. Sears ends up with a bump on his head. Come on, Bob. The one guy the kid goes to talk to ends up getting hung. The grandmother gets it. Her goddamn house looks like a tornado. He had it. What are they looking for, huh? I go to breakfast with a lawyer who's investigating the SNL mess, and she ends up getting blown sky high. Well, that bastard's got my kid, and he's got Joe, and I'm out of here. I'm going with him. You stay. Don't worry. I'm here for the duration. Well, poor little David was thorough, but he lost his compass in Barbados and got caught in the Bermuda Triangle. Hmm, he did. But I didn't. He just had one step to go, poor guy. He didn't make it. But you did. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Just a little skip across the Caribbean to the Cayman Islands and voila. We find the parent corporation of them all, owned by one man. 
Let me guess, could his first name be Charles? How astute. The last name will be a little harder. Would it be Sirid? Ooh, you are smart. Sirid Savings and Loan makes construction loans to Charles Sirid. 15 and 20 million dollars in excess of the value of the contracts. <sighs> Mr. Sirich, Charles, in turn, takes that 15 to 20 million dollars and puts it in his pocket. Please, my dear, a numbered Swiss bank account. Excuse me, uh, everything's been taken care of. I'll make the appropriate calls. Sorry. What do you want for this research that you and little David Wong did? Well, why don't you think of me as an agent? How about 10%? $2 million. You disappoint me. I thought your mother taught you to be more ambitious. You could have it all. All the cash, all the property. Why don't you move in with me? That sounds wonderful. What would your wife think? I don't think she'd mind. She's dead. <laughs> That's funny. I don't remember reading in the papers about that. When did she die? About five minutes ago. Why don't you come here and get to know me a little better? Jesus, what's going on? Hey, Doc. What are you doing here? Mrs. Searage. What about... She's dead. Dead? How? Richard said she OD. Gentlemen. gentlemen, I hope it isn't about can wait. Mr. Searage is not really in a position to do Mrs. Searage called me. When was that? Actually, she spoke to me once last night and once again tonight. What did she say? Well, not much, really. She hung up shortly after asking for the sheriff. Nothing else? She said nothing else? Well, she did... Um... <clears throat> Actually, it was all gibberish, and I really didn't get it. I see. Well, if you excuse me, gentlemen, I really must be getting back. No, wait. I'd like you to do me a favor. Uh, pass my condolences on to Mr. Sirig. I'd also like you to tell him that uh, that my that my daughter is still missing, and if she turns up with one single hair on her head out of place, and your boss is responsible, then you tell him I'm going to kill him. I'm going to rip his heart out of his goddamn chest. And you tell him that. I have to go inside. Yeah. What? I, I 
think I just remembered something she said in her second conversation with me. Idlewild. Idlewild? Idlewild. Isn't that a place in the mountains above Palm Springs? Look, Bob, uh, I might be reaching for straws here, but do you think she might have been telling you that's where Sue and Joe are? I don't know. All right, let's go to the county courthouse in Riverside, and let's find out if Sirius has any property in Iowa. It's the middle of the night. God damn it, Bob, then we'll wake some son of a bitch up. All right, come on. That's it, Sheriff. That's all the way back to 85. And there's nothing registered in the name of Searage, Charles, or anything else. Are you sure she said Iowa? Well, of course I'm sure. Did she say anything else? Hey, look, you only asked me this about 50 all times right, in the right, way over right, here. Right. Look, I gotta go home. I gotta be back here in a few hours. No, wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, try Jean Murray. It could be in her name. Come on, man. We've been here for two hours. The only reason I'm here is because Sheriff Hayes came down so heavy on me. You listen to me, you son of a bitch. That's my kid. Do you understand that? My kid! You got children, huh? You got kids? You do it. I'm gonna sit here and try to snooze. Bob, would you get me a cup of coffee? Come on, come on, come on. All right, look, look, here it is. Gene Murray, quit claim to Charles Searage, May 8th, 1986, transferred to Empire Investments, Barbados. Does that mean he sold it? I don't know. It could be a bookkeeping maneuver. Could I use your phone? Help yourself. Sheriff Station. Yeah, yeah, Fred, it's Ralph. Uh, we're in Riverside, and we're on our way to Idlewild. Idlewild? What for? Look, this might be a wild goose chase, but I think Joe and Sue are there, all right? Take down this address. Um, 53406 Village Vista Road. 53406 Village Vista Road. Got it. Great. Now, listen, if you don't hear from me in a couple hours, you call the sheriff up there, and you tell him to check out the place, all right? Got it. Great. Thanks for your support. I'd like to speak to Mr. Searage. And who are you? A friend. You know what time it is? I sure as hell do. <sighs> what do you want with Mrs. Searage, hmm? Who are you? I'm Richard Stewart, Mrs. Searage's assistant. Oh, sure, I remember you. This is Al Perry, County Recorder's Office, Riverside. I predated uh, some recordings for Mrs. Searage a couple of years ago. You brought me a nice, thick envelope. I had a very nice Christmas. Listen, I got some information for you. Maybe this Christmas could be even a little better. Place an emergency call. Okay. 
Oh, Operator, I want to make an emergency call. Hmm? Area code 619-655-2330. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go upstairs and get dressed. Thank you. It's out of order. We have to get up there mm. and bring some hardware when we need it. Are you going to take her? I'm not letting her out of my sight until I get those papers. Where the fuck are we? We miss it. Hey, this ain't exactly one of those neighborhoods where the numbers are printed on the curbs, you know. Incidentally, I haven't seen a curb in the last 10 months. All right, all right, look, we must have overshot it. Let's go back to the turnoff. I think that might be Village Vista. The number on that sign? No, this is it. Come on. Joe's car. All right, you go around back. I'll take the front. Be careful. Come on. Give me a mic. Get up, Sheriff. Don't even think of it. Get up. Get up! All right. Couldn't keep your goddamn nose out of other people's business. Satisfied? She got them from David Wong's grandmother. She said she was going to sell them to Searage for a lot of money. But then there came a point last night when she realized she wouldn't live to spend the money. When you lie down with snakes, you, uh, 
Come here, you guys. Come here. My babies. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wanna go home? Yeah. Let's go home. Okay. I hope Bob's not late. You know, we're supposed to check in at least an hour. No, it's fine. He's going to be here. Don't worry, all right? Okay. Now, you sure you want to stay with Bob? Because Joe and I really wanted you to come. I know that, Daddy, but I think it'd be nice, you and Joe alone together. You're sweet. Except a week ago, all you could talk about was going to Acapulco. Ralph, it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. No kidding. <laughs> so, uh, how old are Bob's little girls? Eight and ten. Eight and ten. So you're going to be the big sister, huh? Oh, mm -hmm. God, there he is. <laughs> right. Hey, guys. Acapulco. God, I wish I was going with you. Oh, uh, Ralph, meet my son, Cal. He's decided to come live with his pop. Uh, my ex-wife says it's fine. This is your son? It's nice to meet you, Mr. Baker. I've heard a lot about you. How old are you? Well, I'm 15. You're 15? Jesus, Bob, how big was your ex-wife? <sighs> She's a big one. So Sue has told you all about me, huh? Yeah. When did you two meet? No, no, let me guess. A week ago, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Where'd you meet? Well, see, he's on the baseball team, and he had a real tight stance, and I opened it up for him, and now he sees the ball a lot better. Yeah, she helped me out a lot, Mr. Baker. She's only 12, you know that. Well, yeah, I know that, but she's a very smart young lady, and I, I mean, she's smarter than my coach, so I... <laughs> Bob, uh, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> Excuse me. Don't worry, Come here. Listen, my daughter just now is coming into puberty. You make that sound like some kind of disease. Bob, I'm serious. Hey, save it, will you? Save what? Save it for when she's 16, because that's when your troubles are really going to start. Let's do it. <laughs> 